to quote Martin Luther King, I have a dream, a better dream, a dream that was inspired by a YouTube video that somehow came into my feed a year ago and I thought, yeah, hey, I'll take note of that. And I guess I did, but I forgot about it for a long time. But it was a video about dogs in South America that are picked up off the street and they just chuck them into this giant field. You know, like a, a big classic, run boy, you're free now. Run along boy, you're free now. And then they just build these gutters, people donate food, they eat them, all those little Thailand, Tasmanian tiger looking dogs running around having the time of their life. Their dogs look like they have a better life than Paris Hilton's in the little bag. So I was gonna find out because I just really have wanted to do something about pound dogs for a long, long time. Is that possible? Can we raise money for a hundred acre field and call it Friendly Geordie's Fun Fun Dog Land Extravaganza? Be a giant slippery dip from Woolworths, just roll down all of the rolls that they don't want, that human beings can't eat anymore. Yeah, they feed themselves. Surely there's a bunch of baked goods that you can chuck down there. Dogs are garbage bins with mouths, let's be honest. They'll eat it cheap as to run. They'll have the time of their lives running around in the field. I don't even assume that anyone would need to deworm them or, uh, you know, bathe them or anything like that. The, the lake will bathe them. Or the giant water slide, which I assume is going to be the only piece of infrastructure that we need. We could just push them down there by the time they're out. They've had the time of their lives and they're clean. Anyway, that's what this documentary is about. Can we make one of those South American dog national parks? <laughs> Get at us, Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon, if you want to chip in some money, come on. <laughs> I know you lied after your Twitter purchase, but you must have a hundred lying around somewhere. Hello, I'm with Jesse and Jesse, and we are at a dog pound that uh, I don't know the name of. So which, cares. Well, so, so cares. cares. Okay. <laughs> well, you clearly know a lot more about it than I do. On entering the pound, we very quickly realised, hey, these are all mutts. Where are the sausage dogs? Awful lot of staffies there that really should be renamed Bogan Terrier. Like, listen to this one, Bart. <laughs> a pack a day smoker. <laughs> we also realised that probably doing an interview in a dog pound was probably not the best choice for sound. Uh, there was a lot of sad stories that I'd like to share with you, a lot of very important information, but all of that just had this in the background the entire time. What happens is too, a lot of the dogs are surrendered for behavioural issues. So they're not socialised properly with other dogs, they're, they're scared of people. And this is what happens, right? So this guy, this girl, this guy, Friendly, wants attention, like, oh, you know what I mean? Look at me, this guy's probably, he's more scared than any. He's very cute though. Yeah, and, and sometimes, see how, see how jumpy. jumpy he is. So actually, a real reason that a lot of dogs are euthanized mm. is because they're not rehabilitated. Like they're, they're being serene. Excuse me. Yeah. They're being so I'm discovering that a dog pound probably isn't the best place to do an ASMR video. See, the whole point of doing this excursion was learning new things. We decided to go somewhere that was a little more silent, such as the industrial area surrounding it that constantly just has a bunch of trucks going past. Listen to this year. So, so what, what is the deal with that? Why is some, why is some pounds kill and some no kill? Look, there are some bits that are salvageable for that, but let's let's just go on a tour of the pound first, yeah? Check this out. Jeez, I feel like Spaniard. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you was just like, this is an upgrade from Dolben. 100%. Oh, well, look at the two two beds, bro. Oh, what do you mean your own room? What the fuck, soccer ball? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love the broken. Twenty hours. Does this guy have a That's name? That's gotta be. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. He's got a tag on, so either he's gonna be reclaimed. Or okay, he's because like this guy, he's, he he's needs to. A, he can't. He needs he, to be so have so a home. He's, got a, he's, he's got too a, sad. He's got a tag on, so he's either under impound and owner. So, so essentially, how it works is if if he's got a tag on or he's chipped, they have to hold for seven seven if it's non microchip, fourteen if he's microchip. If the owner comes forward, if the owner comes forward, then the change of ownership happens. And then he's up for adoption or goes into foster. Yeah, you can tell he's well looked after. He even looks yeah. like he's got a little bow tie on. <laughs> <laughs> he does look, he does. Also, he looks like he doesn't belong here. 
right? <laughs> like that's a that's that's not a pound dog. <laughs> no, it's not. Like his name's Winfrey. He wants some chum. Sure. He's waiting for his chum. Yeah, I'll ask Brad actually. Yeah, that one gets the Scottish Terrier mm. dog food, doesn't he? Very sweet. Um, well, I uh, hope you don't stick around here and we should look. What's his name? Nash. Nash. <laughs> I like Nash's large head. Yeah, he's got a big head. He's nice. Can I go to the toilet? Come on, you can have that if you want. Yes. <laughs> the good life. <laughs> he's a little land seal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Happy? I like it when dogs have that nice extra layer of skin that you can mush around. <laughs> <laughs> Why are some pounds kill and some no kill? Is that the right lingo? Yeah, yeah. 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 You're all over. Um, <laughs> I'm a fast learner. So essentially, pounds who don't have capacity euthanize based on time because of process. It's just... And then the fucking Indian oh. mine has started. You hear that? No, not really. Well, allow me to step in. Uh, it's hard to get exact figures on this, but a rough estimate would be something around the area of 200,000 dogs a year in Australia going to pounds. Half of them just immediately out because they were lost dogs or whatever. Uh, out of the ones that stay there, about half of those get the Now, the place that we were at doesn't kill dogs. It's one of those no-kill pounds. They're legends for doing it. But you can understand why the other ones are, yeah? Because there is just this endless flow of animals coming in and they've got no room to put them. But frankly, as Jesse was saying, so many of these deaths are preventable just by some basic training of not the dog, the owner. Just most of them seem to be these bogans being like, what the f***? Digging holes in me backyard and barking all day just because I never take it for a walk. It's almost like it thinks it's in solitary confinement. So, PSA, take your dog for a walk. Do it now, you lazy piece of shit. I love walking my dog because after a while when you get into the routine of it, you realize, damn, this is just a symbiotic relationship. You're getting fit and so am I. No holes in the backyard either. There is no downside to doing it. None. Back to Jesse. So in COVID, everybody bought a dog and, and then mate, we ran, had we the ran idea. out of dogs. Foster applications were through the roof. Adoption applications were through the roof. We were actually getting low on dogs. Dogs had run out of pounds. Bloody all the costs for like, you know, your moodles and your groodles and that, they were up thousands and thousands of dollars because everyone was at home hanging out and they thought, well, I'm locked down, I'll get a dog, I'll get a cat. And it was great. But then on the backside of that, everyone started going back to work and all these dogs had anxiety. And there was a shortage on dog Prozac because all these dogs had anxiety. Seriously, <laughs> vets started running low on, I forget what the drug's actually called, but it's essentially Prozac, it was to calm them down. It was anti-anxiety um, medication because these dogs were home all the time with people and they just thought, oh, this is life now. As soon as they left, they're like, where'd you go? <laughs> I'm gonna eat some shit and just like, just destroy it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? A typical anxiety behavior, separation anxiety. So yeah, so there's so many different things that happen because of it, you know what I mean? So many different reasons, but it's also two people these days they don't want to commit, they don't want the perfect dog, they want, you know, they don't want to be inconvenient, you know, and, and Jessie might want to be perfect, but she's definitely not a monster. No way, she's a I sweetie. Know, I like Jessie, I think Jessie's fairly perfect. You know, exactly, so there's there's so many things, but it is fixable. It's just you've got to throw cash at the right unit. problems. Okay, so what, what are the right problems then? Well, dissexing. Microchipping, so if a dog's microchip, you can call the owner and get them to go. There's a great that's, chance that's like on the home. individual, right? And yeah, there's always just going to be deadbeat, so exactly. So where, where, do. where does the money go that's best spent, in your opinion? Um, look, it's hard. We have to be honest, I don't actually know, but it's, it's more like a multi channel, multi approach, a multi prong approach. Come on, the fourth, right? Uh, backyard breeders, unregulated, so they're breeding puppies, right? If mm. there's less puppies. Then there's, and there's dogs. dogs. Exactly. <laughs> dogs in pound, people then go to the pound and adopt a dog. And a lot of them do, there are some really good breeders, but there's also some horrible ones. They just do it for cats, like just bogans in the backyard, just going, you know, five grand a pop. Sweet. Frenchy, French bulldogs, let's go. Yeah? You, you know what I mean? Bogans breed French bulldogs. I didn't even know they knew what French bulldogs were. Oh, they do when there's money when involved. When there's money involved, right, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, dissexing programs, stuff like that to stop dogs breeding, reduce the numbers, stop being used for money, and then also legislation. You need to start throwing money, which is up your alley, is, is you got to lobby politicians. You've got to get the right people pushing the right um, policies through 
government to change it. Sorry, I do apologize for constantly interrupting Jesse. As you can see, he is a man with a heart of gold, but I do need to point this out. I didn't bring one of my actual cameramen to do this taco. I took Miss Love from the pod for his avant-garde eye for exactly this moment is when Jesse is explaining a really vital part of the <laughs> entire documentary. <laughs> Miss Love decides to start doing this. Like in uh, in the Netherlands, they ban a twenty thousand dollars fine. What Jesse was trying to say, the human Jesse, I'm sure the dog Jesse was saying, Rip, thank you for the camera check, Miss Love. God, we're such idiots. But he was saying that in the Netherlands, you get fined about 20 grand for abandoning your dog. That's two Tibetan mastiffs worth of cash, okay? That's brought dog impounding basically down to zero, but I would like to show this next part because it just shows how much work volunteers like Jesse do for these animals. Check this. It's a funny story, you guys. Um, we got a call yesterday yeah. about a guy about 40 minutes from here, um, who our team's going out to now, 17 English staffies living in cars in a backyard. A mix of puppies, mums and dads, and they're all just, and he's been evicted, right? So he has to leave. He's gonna leave with one or two dogs and leave 15 there, because he can, right? But then he doesn't get in trouble. Nothing happens to him. And then now we have to deal with 15 English staffies that may have had no training, behavioral, could be, like, could be Lord of the Flies in there. Whoopsie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just it's layer of shit upon layer of shit upon layer of, of everything that attributes, it's like any social problems in our country. Like it could be, whether it's homelessness, whether it's domestic violence, there's always a few things that, it's kind of like the perfect storm. And there's no, they're no different. It's just that the difference is that they die. You know, humans can yeah. go on, it's like there's, you know, 20% of dogs being euthanized every year. And like, Jessie would be one of them because she's a big staffy. Someone would look and go, ooh, I don't know about her, big nose. Ooh. But look at her, like she's, you know what I mean? Yeah, and so playful. There's so many things. And you don't want Jessie to die, do you? No, but just a reminder, she's lucky enough to be in a no-kill pound. But how do you stop a bunch of Jessies from dying? Well, bear with me, because fuck me, then the wind decided to pick up and we finally got a non-truck infested road. My grand vision was to find some little tech geek that could go to all of these, especially country town ones, because you always go on it and it's just like, any genie rescue hat. And then it's got like, you know, one of those gifs <laughs> yeah, from really 2000 logos, of yeah. a dog, yeah. Right? Like a, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like you're interested, it's like you know it. <laughs> and I swear, if you just told Auntie Jenny what TikTok is, yeah. You'd save a hundred more dogs. Exactly, and that's it because they're so focused on the dogs, they're not. And I'll be completely honest, the average person involved in animal rescue is a uh, woman over 50 or 60. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm late 30s and there's a lot of whole new people coming through, but the majority of current ones at Star Rescue groups, they're all, you know, women who just, they're really passionate about saving animals, but they're not necessarily know how to make a Facebook post or how no. to get Instagram followers or make a TikTok. No. You know, and that's kind of where we're heading. So, and that's an educational thing, and just having someone a bit younger come in and take cool videos of Jesse and photos and things like that, you know. Cats just take up so much time and resources. We're always working against the numbers, which is really hard because they reproduce quicker than we can count. Uh, our lovely Davina is on heat. <laughs> if you've not seen a female cat on heat, it is, um, it's a show. <laughs> um, some of them are very forceful with it as well. She's very quiet and very actually polite about it all. Um, some of them will just fully ram their booties in your face <laughs> oh my God. and scream at you. <laughs> Jesus. You. Anyone. Yes. <laughs> That's incredible. So it just doesn't, don't have to be a cat. No. Not that horny. Pretty much. Yeah. Well, what about all the other male cats in here? Are they going nuts or not? They do, yes. So Simon is one of our horn dogs. He actually makes with his bed. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've, we've, all, we've all been there, eh? <laughs> We're going to the second dog location, and uh, this is how much we care about the cause. Look what's ahead of us. So we just pulled over and there's a fucking moat, and our, our Jesse, our guy said, you're gonna have to punch through it. So let's see if Jordan has seen Fast and the Furious enough times. I am not confident. I would reverse more. I can't, we can't reverse more yeah. because if you go back, you will notice that we are surrounded by water. 
<laughs> all right, so Things this is, we do okay. for dogs. All right, straight down the middle as fast as you can. Records show that Jordan Shanks is, I repeat, is a real man. <laughs> yes, finally made up for not killing that eel. <laughs> so we earlier did uh, have to pump it through a little river. Now we've just been through a lake. <laughs> and if there's one car <laughs> that is made for all to race. It's a Toyota Corolla. Okay. Now strap okay. yourself okay. to okay. Let's feel the G. Okay. Let's do it. One last time. Right in the back, middle. Back, 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 right back. in the middle. Ah! Ah! Yeah! No entry. Got to go through Ooh. again. No, it's no entry here. No, nah, I'm going in. F*** them. I'm doing it. I, I don't care. Oh my God. So where are we near? So we're about... This is Fortune Cove, so we're 20 minutes north of Newcastle. And this is... Just dog Rescue Newcastle. This dog is our new Rescue well, it's, it's in progress. This place is incredible. It was already a boarding kennel, so it had the license to have up to 40 dogs, but it is super expensive to do this in Australia. The idea of this facility is to pick up any dog that's about to be euthanized, take them here until they can find suitable accommodation for it, I'm telling you, Jesse and the gang at Newcastle Dog Rescue, they are thinking about all the little system interlinkages that need to be fixed. They're thinking about it on another level. And look at the accommodation. Check this out. Pretty much it's dogs who are going to die within 24, 48 hours. We have nowhere for them to go, so they come here first. Mm -hmm. We suss them out, we get their vet stuff, and then they move them into the main kennel. Because what you want, don't want to do is pull dogs at at these situations throw them in the main kennel block and spread disease and things like that just in case. Mm. This is going to be emergency for emergency time. So pretty much they're going to have their own outside bit and come around. That's amazing. I didn't know you had to quarantine dogs like you do when you get fish and bring them home. You probably pay 600 bucks and uh, this is better room. than your room. <laughs> <laughs> air con so yeah. power. Air condition. <laughs> We're actually installing aircon. It's power. It'll be powered. Ventilation lights. This is nicer than my room. You can wash it. Like you can literally hose it down, and then the dog will be able to come in and out as much as they want. Insulated. Oh man, I'd be very happy to live here. Look, I'll take okay, the. I'll, I'll take it. What's the ring? I'll take the dog door as well. I don't need the normal door. The fact that you are saying this is all going to cost us five hundred thousand dollars just to house yeah. forty dogs. Yep. <laughs> like if if you bought a hundred acres of land in the country for 500 grand. It would be a hobby farm. Yeah. It'd be like ready to go. Yeah. Like in Thailand they do it as well. So there's so many street dogs that um, there's two rescues over there, Soy Dog, and then there's also one called The Man That Rescues Dogs. I don't know if he's from Sweden. And so what they do, they, the street dogs, they feed them all, but then they have sanctuaries. But what they do, they have communal living. So they don't have kennels, they don't have runs, they don't have anything. They've got literally parcels of fences and they build them all these little platforms, like big, like a big pergola. They, and they all just sleep there and live and everyone's happy, you know what I mean? But there's, Thailand's a completely different monster, like it's, there's so many dogs. Yeah, you gotta move to Bali, mate. Then you can have your dream. It's a great dream, but you're not super experienced dog handler. Watch this, Lise. You can actually pinpoint the second when his heart rips in half. And now. <laughs> oh, no, don't jump the gun. This guy, you know, <laughs> hey, he's an expert. I saw a 15 minute video on <laughs> hey. He's rips off. He's like. You're like a wolfhound. Oh, yeah, so sweet. He's fast, too. He looks like an old man. So much grey hair. Another. He, he's one of the guys that took like an active hunting dog. Wow. They use him to retrieve and and chase kids down and whatnot. Hey. He hey, and sweet. you can flip his ears in and out. You cute. Well, why haven't you got... Look, come on. Here's another one that needs a home. Yeah, Rexy boy. Yeah. Come on. Someone take this, sweetie. Look at you. Oh. 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 His back makes a good bongo sound. <laughs> nom, nom, nom. Yes. No, no, no that's more. All. Actually, that's not all. What? <sighs> Anything for views. Go to like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we learned a lot that day. 
actually, I think Miss Love learned a lot. I had to have it broken to me several times, again in the car park, that Miss Love was secretly filming because he couldn't believe what a slow learner I am. There's not one place for support that can address a lot of things that, because all rescues, all us, we focus on saving dogs. Surrenders, pounds, their job's to focus on the dogs coming through these gates and doing the best they can. There needs to be something stemming the flow because it just keeps coming, it's just it's non-stop. So if you can get something in there that stops them mid-level, it just diverts a few trainers, behavior, fix a fucking fence, you know, you, you, can, you can almost cut it in half with Whoa. the right resources and the right plan. And then you can identify what the issue is and then deploy resources at those. And then over time, it'll make a bigger impact than opening up Jordan's dog kennel, you know what I mean, Jordan, and have a try, you can feel Imposium, build, thank you very much. Imposium. Jordan's <laughs> rescue dog Imposium and have a thousand kennels, you still got a thousand dogs you got to find homes for. You're just going to get more money to build more kennels to get more dogs. It's not, you're, you're treating the symptom, not the disease. Mm. Mm. It's like anything. Mm. You know? mm -hmm. Truth bomb. It is a truth bomb. It really is. It's actually like, I can't believe how simple dog rescue, because I was thinking that. I was thinking you would have to build something the size of Wet n Wild. Dogs you know with sunglasses and Hawaiian shirts would be a plus, but you know, like it's early days and we might not have an amount of money. Requirement, that would be a requirement. Well, look, see, this is why we, we had to ask him if it was. But it turns out like all you need is like a lead. Just need to say, idiot, walk your dog. And that's most of the problem. Fix the fence. Mm -hmm. and, that, you know, and like I said, could you imagine a dog emporium for a thousand dogs? It's a, that's like, there's like, the dog you saw, there's like five or ten here, and you heard how loud it was. You're right. Be an ACDC concert. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, less raspy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that dog. <laughs> Little lost his voice. Oh. Still so oh. <laughs> Angus Young. <laughs> oh, no, what's his name? Brian Johnson, Brian I think. Johnson. <laughs> Well, what a learning curve that was. We started with, let's start a wet and wild for stray dogs, and then realize, oh, actually, if you just tell most dog owners they should probably walk their dog, you would reduce the amount of dogs going into pounds massively. So shout out Jesse from Dog Rescue New South Wales. They do tremendous work. If you want to give them a donation, we'll put the link down there. They clearly deserve it. But also, if you don't have any money, and you're one of these inner city bums that are always like, mm, you want a greyhound, but my owner won't let me have one. Just between you and me, you know, why don't you just say that you're looking after your needs, greyhound, when the inspector comes over. <laughs> but also, <laughs> if you don't want to do that, and you do want all the benefits of a dog without the inevitable sad day when they die, how about you just go to the pound and walk some dogs. That's incredible because that is a win-win situation. You're getting exercise, the dogs are getting exercise, they're gonna love it. And then on top of that, you give the people that are at these dog pounds that I'm starting to realize there's very little difference between them and being a 1920s elephant zookeeper. They're just constantly shoveling shit. Give them more of an opportunity to shovel the shit out of the kettles. That would greatly reduce their workload if you just said, I'll go walk a dog for a couple of times a week. And, oh, who could that be? Oh, Jesus. Hello? Very well, thank you. Oh, okay. Sorry, we'll move that immediately. Or, yes, yes, sorry. We, we did get the wrong car park. You're right about that. Sorry, we'll, we'll do that now. Thank you for your service, thank you. <laughs> it's staying in. <laughs> it's got to stay Keep rolling, let's get it. We parked in the wrong car park. So we've got to wrap this up really quickly. <laughs> we're doing it for the dogs. Because <laughs> the other thing that you can do, this is massive, like if I told you about walking the leg, yeah, we've done that once. So the second one is, hey, all of you little Zoom social media nerds with your damn smartphones and whatnot, I wouldn't know think about that, but you guys that do have it, guys, you can just go to the pound and say, I'll do the social media for you, because a lot of these people just don't have the skills that you have of sitting around and watching Mr. Beast. You've got your own education. You're always talking about the fact that your needs didn't do anything with your life. Wrong, now you can be of service. 
And the way that you do this, this is actually where we're going to start. I still think that we should be aiming for the dog wet and wild theme park, despite no one else on earth, it seems, thinking that that's a good idea. But the original stepping stone for it will be, as always, digital with the friendly Geordie Center for Dogs that can't read good. Which is going to be a Facebook post on my Facebook page where all we're going to be doing is linking up people that already do volunteer at these pounds with people that want to volunteer at these pounds. And I'm just saying like as little or as much as you want to do, but if you are at one of these dog shelters that does do good work, advertise your wares there. Tell people why they should go to that one and what city they're in so we can link up more of these volunteers and people that want to be doing this together. Because that's what Facebook was all about. That and I think rating hot chicks, I think originally. But how far we've come, man. <laughs> Looks like Suck learned a few things as well. Anyway, make sure that you like and subscribe. Go to that link at the bottom if you want to volunteer. And uh, thank you for watching. Also, we tried to do one on Cat's Bed. I think you'll see why we didn't go too far into that one. This is how we make content. This is how we do it. Get in there. Lock him in. You know, I actually feel intimidated. It's like Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, but with actual most threatening animals. Look at the wild YouTuber. Buy a YouTuber today. Jordan, how much should we sell you for? I'm, I'm not D6, please. <laughs> uh, Michael Chip. Well, the government knows where I am. Like, I've got a phone number, isn't that enough? Michelle. He wanted a phone number. Ah. <laughs> I'd like to get out now. He's flying with you. Oh my god. And that's why this dog is cat. <laughs>